Welcome to the second of our three videos of worship for Sunday the 19th of December 2021. In this video, Jean is going to read us our Bible reading and then I'm going to spend some time thinking with you about it. The reading today is taken from Luke chapter 1 verses 26 to 45. The birth of Jesus foretold. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favoured. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favour with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come on you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age, and she, who was said to be unable to conceive, is in her sixth month. For no word from God will ever fail. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. Mary visits Elizabeth. At that time, Mary got ready and hurried to a town in the hill country of Judea, where she entered Zechariah's home and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leapt in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. In a loud voice she exclaimed, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child you will bear. But why am I so favoured that the mother of my Lord should come to me? As soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in my womb leapt for joy. Blessed is she who has believed that the Lord will fulfil his promises to her. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You will be with child and will give birth to a son and you are to call him Jesus, says the angel to Mary. I suppose in one way the idea of young women giving birth to children uh, is as natural uh, as ever. Uh, indeed, uh, in her book uh, The Clan of the Cave Bear, Jean Owl, uh, if that's how you pronounce it, posits uh, a prehistoric world 15,000 years ago. Uh, where actually people do not know uh, the connection between physical conduct and having children. Uh, and uh, women uh, simply, so to speak naturally, are gifted the gift of a child by the Mother Earth. Uh, but by the time uh, Mary uh, was around 2,000 years ago, uh, they did indeed know the connection. And Mary knew perfectly well uh, that she had not been in that kind of relationship and therefore uh, was not pregnant. The angel Gabriel came to her to tell her this most amazing news. Well, Luke, uh, in his book, uh, uses the birth stories uh, as ways of trying to explain to his readers who Jesus is, rather than simply pitching straight in and saying uh, the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as Mark does, uh, Luke goes round it uh, in a more round-the-houses manner. 
uh, and tells the miraculous story uh, of the birth of Jesus uh, and the significance of his name, uh, for he was the Joshua of the Old Testament, uh, made into the new, the one who would save his people uh, and would give them a lasting heritage. Uh, and he was the fulfilment of Emmanuel, uh, God with us, the virgin who will give birth to a child who will assure us of God's presence with us. But from a human dynamic, uh, what would Mary make of such a piece of news as this? Uh, it's interesting, isn't it, uh, that she did not immediately react by outright denying it, uh, saying, I am a virgin, therefore this cannot be. Uh, rather, uh, she answered with a question, how can this be, seeing as I am a virgin? Uh, and Luke explains uh, that the character of Jesus uh, would be singularly influenced by the Holy Spirit. Jesus would not simply have a measure of the Holy Spirit in him, as all of us do, because God gifts life to each one of us, and each person has got something of the divine spark in them. But Jesus would be special. Jesus would be the divine spark incarnate uh, into human flesh. Uh, he would be the one who actually is the image of the invisible God, as opposed to simply a picture of him. Jesus would be the one who shows us what God really is like. Uh, and Mary responds by saying, May it be to me according to your word. I've often wondered uh, whether that means, yes, I embrace this future uh, with anticipation and hope, and I long that it will be so, or whether it means something like, well, we'll wait and see if it works out the way that you say it will. But if it does, uh, all well and good. At any rate, uh, Luke uh, is human enough uh, to put in Mary's immediate concern, which is to check out the story. The one thing uh, that the angel has told her that she's able to verify is that Elizabeth, her kinswoman, her cousin, maybe her auntie, uh, has uh, become pregnant in her old age. Well, that's a story that you can go and check out, isn't it? So she gets ready at once and hurries off. Uh, and the second message to her is one which confirms the first. Uh, the babe inside me leapt for joy, uh, and blessed is the one who is to be the mother of my Lord. Uh, there are many people who claim to have had messages from God. Uh, some of them live in this parish. Uh, some of them are pretty weird messages as well. Uh, and from Luke, uh, we learn that if we think we've had a message from God, well, we ought to check it out. Uh, we ought to uh, find out whether there are other things which confirm the message. It was well known that Elizabeth was beyond the age of childbearing. Uh, so Mary uh, does the right thing in going to find out uh, about whether it's true or not. And in Elizabeth's word, Mary then has hope to be able to believe in her heart what the angel has said. The way he tells this story, uh, Luke does not put Mary's song of praise, the Magnificat, straight after the Annunciation, but rather he puts it straight after the confirmation of the message by Elizabeth saying to Mary that you are to be the mother of the Lord. When we think that we've heard something from God, I think that this story teaches us three things. Uh, the first is not to immediately write it off as being beyond reason, uh, beyond what modern science tells us is possible. We have to remember uh, that science doesn't tell us what's possible. It just tells us uh, what happens when experiments are conducted. Nobody is saying that you could do another experiment to find out whether this virgin birth idea would repeat itself. What science is telling us is what normally happens. It's not telling us whether God has the power uh, to do something different uh, at his choice. Uh, the second thing uh, is uh, to check it out uh, by trying to confirm it by other things. Do you think that God is telling you to do something? Well, consult other people. Uh, find out what God has said to others. Mary Jane, the Lord has said to me that you are to be my wife. 
Well, he hasn't told me, uh, so perhaps uh, you need to wait until uh, something else happens. And the third thing is uh, that when the confirmation arises, uh, act on it uh, and believe it, because it is possible that God will want to do something new through you. Why am I so favoured that the mother of my Lord should come to me? Uh, I don't know why Mary in particular was chosen. I do know that each of us are chosen for some things. Uh, the Bible says that God knows the plans he has for each one of us to give us a future and a hope. It says that in Jeremiah. Uh, what I do know uh, is that we need to be on the alert for what God is doing. Uh, particularly in this time of Covid, uh, when uh, the whole world has been turned upside down, when new opportunities are presenting themselves uh, for what we should do, when each of us has been jolted out of our usual way that we spend our lives. Uh, let's be asking God uh, what he wants of us, and let's be open to his new things. But the main thing, says Luke, uh, is about this baby. This baby uh, will be the one who is the Son of the Most High. He will be the one who is God himself come to dwell with us. He will be the one who is able to make a difference to each one of us. He's the one who brings the Holy Spirit into our lives. He's the one who saves us from the consequences of our sins. This Christmas, let's turn our hearts back to him. Let's open the greatest present of all, our Lord Jesus. And let's consider how we can respond to his gift of himself to us. Let us pray. Father, as we give and receive presents, grant that this Christmas may be one in which we receive the Lord Jesus for ourselves, in which we hear you speaking, and in which we respond to your call to open new horizons. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. As Jesus has come into our world to save us from our sins, we have the opportunity of confessing our faith in him and declaring our belief. Let's use the Apostles' Creed, the formula arrived on by the Church many years ago. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And that's the end of the second of these three videos. Again, to follow us into the third in which we pray, please just choose it after it appears on the screen when I've finished speaking.